Hello, welcome back, Saints Nation. I am Patrick Smoke Chambers, and I'm joined here today by Aiden Silent Ghostomers. And we have quite the stream ahead of you. It's going to be three matches. First up, a nice matchup between our Saints Academy and Marietta College. Has some big stakes. We'll get into that after. Second matchup is going to be a nice Overwatch 2 matchup between our Saints Academy team and Minnesota State University. And for our third matchup, it is going to be a CCL match at 7.30 between Saints Varsity on COD versus Purdue University, Purdue University Northwest. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, I feel like we haven't really streamed uh, R6 in a while, but so I feel like today's going to be a uh, extremely big day for us, to be honest. And I believe we're going into this game, but brings us to the finals, you said? or No, so so playoffs. So playoffs, there are sorry, some yeah. really, really big stakes right now uh, ahead of us, so we need to focus on those. The Saints right yeah. now are 3-4, and four, but they are up against Marietta College, who's currently 1-6 and six with their only win coming from a forfeit that happened to uh, Fisher. I believe Fisher, yeah, gave them that win. So yeah. it, this should be a pretty easy matchup for the Saints. I say that, but again, R6, anything can happen. Can happen yep. They cannot, you know, get too cocky and overconfident, obviously. You don't want to get, you know, knocked out of the playoffs, uh, potentially. But so, there yeah. are some implications that could stop them. They need to win two games without both games going 8-7 to seven in their favor. And mm -hmm. the reason I say that is because right now Drexel is sitting at 4-4, four and four, tied for that playoff spot that we're trying to fight for. Yeah. And they have a two-round uh, advantage, uh, like plus differential, on our Saints Academy. So they need to try to get these wins without losing that round differential. They need to have more than a two round difference on Drexel, but Drexel cannot play any more games. So it's just down to fate and we have to let it uh, come down to that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I feel, I honestly feel like it's just going to be an easy sweep. I mean, hopefully it doesn't backfire, but I swear, I feel like it is going to be the easy, easy sweep for the R6 team. But uh, yeah, for us, we are going to be also having Overwatch and Call of Duty. And I know that today was actually an, an update for three play or three characters for Overwatch, I believe. Uh, one was Sombra, Symmetra, and I believe Mauga. his name is Mauga. Mauga. Yes. So Mauga's base health was decreased from 400 to 375. It's not that much, but the cardiac overdrive no longer fills over health on activation. Duration increased from four to five seconds, and cooldown increased from 10 to 12. Sombra, uh, I believe, in the last update. Yeah, previous subduction was ultimate cost reduced by 8%. So they ended up just bringing it back to how it was before, before they did last week's update. And then with Symmetra, it kind of got uh, a little bit nerfed with the primary fire damage per second decreased from 65 to 60 and health decreased from 50 to 40. Right, so I mean, interesting changes, of course. You know, Malga's uh, tanks are in a little bit of a weird spot, but yeah. Malga did need a little bit of a touch up. Sombra, especially, uh, she has just been absolutely crazy in the meta right now, absolutely taking it away. And Symmetra as well, it's such a strong character that really does need that touch up once in a while. But oh, yeah. for now, there's also a bigger thing that we got to talk about. And yeah, that's the fact that we're in a new R6 season, ladies and gentlemen. And with that, there are some massive changes. It's the R6 of old coming back, <laughs> as there are no more 1.5 magnified scopes. The reticle option is still available, but now at a 2.5 zoom. So it is the age of the ACOGs. It's right back. It's just like the Siege, how I remember it back in the day. Yeah. With a couple of minor changes, they did slightly make the dot in the middle of the holographic A a little bit bigger. So it's a little bit harder to hold those like pixels uh, that people used to be able to with those 1.0 scopes yeah but there's also a new operator in the mix and it is deimos he is a 2-2 two, two, i'm pretty sure on attack he has nomads ak yep. uh for the primary weapon or the mossberg shotgun whichever one you'd like to run i usually run the ak because yeah. it's just such a high damage dealing weapon with uh pretty you know well the rate of fire is a little bit lower high damage like i said and the recoil is pretty easy to control mm -hmm. and uh, i mean we can't talk deimos without talking about that secondary my pistol. god that thing just destroys <laughs> Do you want to talk about those hit points? Right. Well, I mean, you, you bring out the secondary pistol for Deimos. I mean, this thing has six rounds in the chamber, 78, shot, uh, 78 damage per shot. I mean, you literally become Han Solo the second you whip this thing out. Seriously. So, like it, so I mean, with this ability as well, which is the ability to scan defending operators and then track them as they move live throughout the map, it is such a strong operator to confirm a round win mm -hmm. with if you are smart, you play the timeout and you utilize his scans between somewhere in between sort of the mid to late mid stages yeah. of a round, a really good confirm. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm just interested to seeing how, if 
they will be banned him, or they'll ban him or not, to be yeah, honest. So because he is, a, he is a new operator, but his, just like you were talking about with that pistol, it's just OP. Like, it honestly is. Right, so, I mean, the pistol is a little bit uh, game-breaking right now, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Two shots to kill is, uh, I mean, we already thought one shot headshot TTK was, you know, some people didn't like that. Yeah. But now with a weapon this strong as well, I mean, it's it's basically, it's kind of like a boss jeep in a way, it's, but it, yeah. it does it does fire faster, obviously, you know, boss G is a lot more damage dealing. But this pistol is crazy, and because of that, and the ability, mostly because of the ability, though, yeah. uh, it makes things a lot harder for the defenders to roam. We know that Vigil does counter out Deimos' ability from using that ERC-7 in order to shield away. But again, players who are smart will just bait a drone, make the Vigil use that ability, and mm -hmm. the second that's done and on cooldown, they can get that scan on him if they really have to try to figure out where he is if he's giving them problems. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And also, I thought I, I, thought I heard something too about with the um, signal disruptors. Believe with that. Yes, so as well as uh, Mute, he can place his yeah. jammers as well, and players who are scanned can stay in those jammers, and the uh, scanning from Deimos will go away. But if you leave it before the timer goes out on it, then you will, then be. You will be found out. Yeah. As well as the fact that Deimos can literally just watch where you went, and if that signal all of a sudden disappears, he can assume you're standing on top of a jammer, he can calm that out to the team, they know your sort of general position. So, yeah. again, it is a lose-lose. It's not a situation that you would want to find yourself on the back of so if Deimos does stay in any of these picks uh, I, I would say that it is a very hard operator to counter if you do not get rid of him early yeah exactly well we'll just see how that ends up turning out in the game and uh, yeah I, I kind of feel like he's like a mixture between two operators I believe what is it lion and also What's his name? Jackal, I believe his name is? Yeah, I mean, he's just kind of the ultimate roam clear. So if, he you really really wanna, if you really want to break it down, I'm, you know, it, it's just really tough. You can't roam against him uh, all that well, which is why I personally predict that he will be uh, St. Clair's at least attacker ban, if not yeah. Marietta's ban. Uh, yeah. Usually it is kind of messed up because it did switch out their bans a lot. But, True. you know, St. Clair comfortable on a lot of different maps, uh, as well as Oregon. Yeah. I would say the only map that St. Clair would not ban Deimos out on is Oregon, because banning out Flores in Oregon just makes a little bit more sense. He is so troublesome with all of those RC Rotero drones, and especially holding out positions on defense like Elbow, become near impossible when your shield's just getting absolutely peppered by these things. Seriously, for real, it is, yeah. But, yeah... What was I going to say? Why don't, you, uh, why don't you touch us up on a little bit of COD? Any new changes to COD recently? I know that there were a couple of attachments that, you know, a couple of weeks back did get uh, fixed up. So we can address those changes. It was mainly for the MC, uh, the MC, I think it was w, MCW. MCW, MCW, ACR. the assault rifle. Yeah, it's, I really, I got to point out, I got to, I really wish they kind of added more assault rifles, really, because using one assault rifle is kind of, I mean, it gets you comfortable with it, but still. But the main change was that with the barrels, they completely changed it. Uh, from what it was before, I believe it was mid-season two, before like the update happened, all, it was mainly you saw the same build all the time, but now it did, customization kind of switched up a lot, really. I mean, a lot of, you see more pro players kind of going towards like the Rival 9, this SMG. That's kind of like what I use, to be honest. I use that more than the MCW, or MCU, sorry. Yeah, MCW is, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you're right, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, the Rival 9, obviously, you know, if everyone's running the MCW, I mean, regardless, you know, Renetti as well yeah. is obviously the choice for the secondary, that's also, I yeah, believe. That's the choice. Uh, is it the only, or is or the rest banned out? I can't remember. No, you, there's... There is that pistol, and there's also you can use a melee weapon as well, like the knife or the karambit. But really, would you use that in maps as of like mm, control? Probably and, not. You probably just want yeah. the Renetti out. But yeah. what I do know for the COD matchup as well is that this should be a pretty favorable one for our Saints varsity. Yes, it so is actually. Yeah. It is mainly uh, going to be the focus in terms of stakes on R6, obviously, because these boys on the R6 team are playing to try to get into NACE playoffs. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's kind of more towards R6. But I believe with Call of Duty, I think we are 11 to 1 right now. And the other team, I believe it's University of Purdue Northwest. Is that what the name is? Yeah. yeah. So they're actually 8 2 right now. Okay, so, so it's a little it's a little it's bit like, of a Yeah, it's kind these of these are like, two good teams and going at it. Okay, I oh, was yeah. I was told earlier that it should be a little one-sided. My mistake then, uh, if this is a very, you know, good matchup, then hey, I'm not complaining, right? I mean, that's just going to make for good content, yeah. and we can look forward to having that. But, uh, you know, for now, we just got to wait it out and see. 
and uh, that's kind of going to be it for now. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, uh, you know, with in terms of R6 as well, if we want to go over, like, map bands and stuff like that, I would... Just before we quickly, you know, pitch it to a short break, yeah. I would say that uh, map band wise, St. Clair, uh, pretty comfortable on Oregon Clubhouse. Mm. But if I was to make a prediction, and this is just going to see if I'm actually insane, uh, I could see St. Clair dragging Marietta out onto a skyscraper or a cafe, yeah. something to throw them off. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting. We'll see where it goes from there. More action coming to you guys soon after this short break. Welcome back, St. Clair, and now we are seeing now into our Overwatch game. It's going to be G-Scales on the tank on D.Va. Let's see what the Saints can do. A little bit of a team fight, I think. Earlier control uh, from, I believe, St. Clair College. Yep, they are building progress now on that point in Elios. Well, for sure. Looks like the game just started as well. 
Though Minnesota State already up to 60% as well in the capture. So we have been in here for a little bit, but it is okay. We're here now, and that's all that matters. G-Scale on the Diva. Let's talk lineups a little bit. We have the Moira and the Torbjorn coming through, as well as Cosmo and uh, Grubby on the Lucio and the Sojourn. Down to the other side on Minnesota State, looking at a Ramatra, Tracer, Sojourn, Bap, and Lucio combination coming through. For sure. Yeah, I'm kind of interested in how this is going to be for, for because you don't usually see um, Brimstone as uh, Brimstone. Yeah. Oh, it's not Brimstone. Torb, sorry, Torb, what's his Torb, name? Torb, Torb, Torb. Yep, Torb. And sorry, what's the healer's name again? Uh, that it is going to be Lucio and Moira, Moira on the yeah. side of Saint Clair, if you're asking. Yeah. So it is going to be the Diva Bomb coming through. G-Scales finds the pick onto Invictus. Holy Juan picking up one as well. And Grubby and Holy Juan, it is going to be both of them to clean up that attack from Minnesota. They are going to keep the point. And with now progress building, they are going to lean on the Holy Juan with that Lava coming through. That Molten Core should be able to try to drive Minnesota State off the point or at least control it to the point where St. Clair can kind of have their way with them. But they have to be wary of the damage screen and the Pulse Bomb. Pulse Bomb does go down, doesn't find the target though, and now the damage screen goes through. This is Minnesota's last kind of attempt at to push this point. They do force the overtime. Three on point right now. A huge shot from the railgun to take out Grubby. Snare goes down on the side of Sojourn. 25 charge, has to try to build up, but the multiple core does come through. The Sojourn stuck in the corner. The Bat Lamp able to keep her alive in time, but now has to try to focus solely on healing. One gun down. St. Clair trying to take control, and Victus gets rid of the Torb turret, and now the D.Va on the side of G skills have to play things passively most likely going to give the point over to minnesota state and that is exactly what happened although from the looks of it with just 99 percent left on it they could end up getting that back however it will be an intense battle to get that back right well i mean I, I would usually say that they could look to take it back but cosmo on the lucio did die there so it's yeah. going to be a little bit that st Clair does have to wait but they can't wait for too long 91 percent now they have to try to find the push no alts on the side of minnesota state and this coalescence is going there, to mean so much for st Clair. Oh, however it is going to be the boop into the well that is going to spell the doom for g scales and most likely the St. Clair team, unless this coalescence can go massive, it should be Theo getting picked off, or Holy Hawn picked off in the building, but it's not going to happen. The rush in overtime looming. Can they touch? Can they force? It is four on one now on the site, but it is going to be St. Clair to actually be able to hold for a minute. This is 99% overtime going down. G scales back on point, trying not to get pooped off. Has to play it smart. Damage screen will D Mac, and that should be the very end for our push onto the point. It will spell the end for Elios well. And a very clean and a little bit of a scrappy finish for the side of Minnesota State. For sure, they get the point nonetheless. For sure, yeah. Man, that was an intense battle, huh? Yeah, well, I mean, it was just kind of getting a little rough around the edges. It was mm -hmm. especially the turning point when Coswell died on that Lucio, no longer having the speed to get the team into the point for a fast push. Yep. They have to then wait for him. And as we load up our other graphic, we do see that St. Clair is on, I believe, Oregon. Yes, yes versus they are. Marietta. So this is a favorable matchup, I would say, for St. Clair, this being one of their big maps. And now it's going to be interesting to see how St. Clair can kind of, you know, take this. We are going to see that Marietta's lineup is going to have be the Dokabi, the Ash, the Yana, Nomad, and Buck. And the first pick goes down. It is going to be Rapid swinging that Z Hall, and he is going to find the first pickup on Defunka. Sure, it looks like the rappers that they are using are Mute, Thermite. The attackers bomb diffuser. Looks like, uh, what is that? Mora? Mira? Mira, and Hassel, then... and Jaeger. Yes. There by Charm as well onto kids rotate finding one on two i believe it was spoon so no more buck for the side of marietta and if you look at the site right now it's going to be a very difficult push you do have the nomad to take care of flank watch but again only one call left in dokubi's pocket they do have nine flashbangs though i will point out that they can try to use two advantage they do However, yeah they have to watch out for a plant scenario because saint Clair still has two c4s online for sure i'm not sure how that nobin oh wow yeah, and it's going Rapid to Rapid just Rapid picked off, yep. Lamar. He's just so good with that Mark 14, right? I mean, you peek the wrong way and he will absolutely make you pay for it. Not surprised to see him, obviously, on that operator. We know he does main a Rooney. He's doing mm -hmm. such a good job this entire season. But now St. Clair with a minute left, they just have to hold here. Oh, picked off by Rapid again. That's what, three kills now? 
Right, and I mean, they're just feeding, right? I mean, two from the bunk's window. There's no reason to solo peek this, and now with one walking up dormitory stairs, it should just be rapid to recognize where the swing's coming from. They do have the pick now and the intel. Rez did get one kill onto Jox, but now with that intel shown, refire in the corner, double. does find the double, but the second should just walk right through with the game. With rapid off, yep. It is going to be rapid with a quad kill. Starting things off strong. Scenes take it off 1-0. Well, from the way that things are looking, it looks like uh, this game is going to be great. Oh, it looks like we're going to into the second round for Overwatch as well. And sorry, sorry, you finish your point. And then yeah, I'll, I'll from go. what it looks like, St. Clair does have the point. Good. Minnesota having some trouble getting into there, kind of trapping them in their spot just a tad bit. Although they have to be careful not to push out too far. Now, if you look at it, Singler already has 70%. Graviton search yeah. coming through in the combo with oh. the four bolt as well. It's going oh. to be the trouble. It's going to be the quad. The Holy One. Are you kidding me? Team kill down for St. Clair. That should be, unless they can get onto the point really fast, it should be the end for Minnesota. That was such a beautiful combination. The Graviton surge into the Molten Core in order to find the 4K. Such an amazing play whipped up from G-Scales and the Holy Juan. For sure, that's just... Mitsune rush just to try to get Minnesota in. Bubble going down, but the turret and all the utility is set up. Coalescence in the back pocket as well, as well as a beat to try to counter out this, uh, this surge that does come through. It should be the ultimate coming in from the Sojourn, but they do actually have the capture. Yep, no they reason took the to point. burn it right now then, as they can just sit back and build percentage. The rail shot pick does come through, and now St. Clair actually has to move backwards. Just a tad bit, yes. And I'm interested in how they're gonna use the Mora here. Usually I'm a main Mora, I, I main Mora the most. And usually that's the type of the person where you kind of like, she's mainly a little bit DPS and she is tanky as well. So kind of going in there, popping your shields at the correct time is vital. It's important. But also having that healer behind you, that's most important as well. Right, I mean, I just want to point out that, of course, you know, the Saints with a beat and a Coalescence in pocket, and G-Scales is already two-thirds of the way to a Graviton Surge damage screen coming down with the Overclock coming in from the Sojourn. It is going to be boost with a critical shot onto the Widow, finding the head. Goodness as well, finding a rail shot onto Cosmo. No more beat now for St. Clair. The critical kill does come through, though, for the Holy Juan, finding one onto the Kiriko. See the Ramatra, he does have the he Annihilation does have his ult. ready. So you have to think when the Annihilation gets popped that the beat from the Lucio will get popped as well. The now Coalescence going through, Ramatra just shielding it away. Probably has to pop Annihilation soon, the Lamp no longer there. Annihilation pop, beat goes down just as I was saying. And they should and find they the regain. counter, they should find the triple. It's going to go the exact way of St. Clair. And now they just have to deal with the Ramatra. Easy pickings, they have the, they have the control they need. They will tie this up. 1-1 one, one a piece. Dang, just crazy how with Overwatch, just similar to like R6, things can change drastically. Even while winning that one round in that game, it can easily go back to forth, back and forth. Bomb located by right, and I mean, now getting back into Siege, we can see that Blurrup has been picked off on the Fender. So let's take a look at the bans real quick. Like I did say, St. Clair did ban on the Flores on attack, ban yep. the Azami on defense as well. And then on the defensive side for Marietta, they ban out the Warden. And then they also ban out the Osa the for the attacking side as well. Dropped. A little bit of an awkward one, but there the are setups, is, like yeah. for example, walking through Freezer and Laundry that the Osa, especially Laundry, that the Osa can try to find a plant. Mm -hmm. So that is going to be a you know, decent ban from both sides. Pelican, though, does go down. And with 45 seconds left, I don't know exactly what hatch control they have, but they definitely don't appear to have Laundry hatch control. With the Habana no longer alive, this is going Rapid to be a hold. very, very hard round. For sure. I mean, this is kind of what you expected with the band, to be honest, especially with the new operator. Things kind of changed a little bit. Right, but I mean, it does say that, you know, you do see Deimos is alive in back pocket. It is going to be the freezer laundry push, able to find rapid one does. on the crouch. It is in going to be rapid, but the trade just come through. Traded back, though, by Salty Boy. Just kind of holding this base for corridor angle. It is a 1v3 now. The picks do come in from Jocks. This freezer laundry take from Marietta has gone horribly wrong, but just as I say that, Sadik, the side of that 417, finds one, but with no time left, he has to try to force a plant. Going through the laundry rotate will get picked off from yep. Charm with that TCSG on the side of Cade. St. Clair taking a clean second round, I believe, at the time. That believes it's the <laughs> second round. <laughs> yes, yep. that was the second round. Okay, okay, I didn't look at the round count with that. <laughs> Back to the next game with Overwatch. And it looks like we have Minnesota got point first. 
Yes, and it is going to be the control now on the Tracer, who is going to find uh, the assist onto one, I believe it was the Moira. And now taking this back control, and Will's trying to stay around that health pack. Ramatra should have a really big effect here, but a beautiful Maywall to just kind of get him out. And now, as we kind of look at the situation, it is going to be the rail shot that takes out the Sojourn, but the Ramatra does go massive. As I said, he was oh, going Tracer to finds off. three with the form change. And it is going to be Ramatra to clean up there. And Victus accidentally ledging uh, himself off of the edge there. But it doesn't really matter. They do take the map control back. But with only 14% on the back of St. Clair, they really need to try to work here in order to get some bank really rock. Yeah, that's for sure. It does look like they all are they all are together. They just have to push in. Game stream going down. You really have to think right now. That oh. is such a huge rail shot kill. Because I was gonna say the freeze and the annihilation might have been a perfect combo to take sight. But now the damage screen able to just kind of hold off everything else. The alt from the I believe Ramatra is now ready as well. It's such good a good job of taking care of St. Clair off the back of some beautiful play off of the damage screen, getting rid of the Holy Juan there and denying the freeze from going, uh, having the potential to go down is so massive there because the combo can come through with some of the annihilation. Now we look at Minnesota State's side. They have a beat to try to counter this. They have the overclock. They have the annihilation themselves. Oh my God, using it correctly, it looks like they can't get that point if they just work as a team to get that. And Justice fading in, using the Hubble oh. to try to find something. The freeze does go down. I believe the Coalescence might have been the pop combo, but now it is going to be the Holy One who has to force the freeze out. This is not a good push from St. Clair, Man. and it is going to be caught out. The Pulse Bomb doing the rest of the damage. This should be all she wrote, unless St. Clair can find a miracle touch off the back of this Lucio. No, time nope. will not be on their side. It will be Minnesota State taking this second point, and I believe they also take the first match. The first match, yep. Although we still have, I believe, two more games, I believe, yes. don't we? Yes, we do. This is such a dangerous angle, but it is going to be Charm finding the headshot right now, sitting in kitchen. They have the wall open, and now Corey Rob finding another one on the side of the SMG 11 on to Funka. Not a good push from Marietta, and it's just going to go all the way oh. to St. Clair. Charm, they cannot find a damn way to clear you out of kitchen. The chef keeps cooking, and he's going to pick up yet another one. My God, just that angle right there too. You can't do anything about it. Right, I mean, it's just such an easy peek to hold. He has the backup as well. He has Korob on the side of the mute to back up his position. The trade is available for them, worst mm -hmm. case scenario. But St. Clair so far on this defense, 3-0. Now, what I will say is, this is a very, uh, you know, disregarding the fact that if the demos is played, which yeah. I'm surprised they haven't actually brought it out yet. Maybe Marietta just isn't used to really running it just yet, maybe not too comfortable. Mm -hmm. But this is dangerous because it lets Rapid get away with roaming. Rapid is a huge roam player. Yeah, I noticed that too. Even he's playing on the Aruni, he is not scared to really kind of work his way around soft roam and make you pay for not covering your flanks. So it's, it's interesting. They can't clear out these power positions and St. Clair can just kind of have this happen with the Mira. They have two power positions they can hold. They have the Jammers to block out the Doki Pulse if they really mm -hmm. choose to do so. Charm on the ADS Jaeger. Again, power positions can be held here, and there is not a lot on the side without a Deimos. Necessarily clear it out as fast as Marietta would, pro Marietta would probably Attackers like to. to locate a bomb and defuse it. Three, four, coming for St. Clair, uh, and I mean, you know, it's just difficult. As I was going to say, though, don't count Marietta out just yet. I never want to count our opponents out, but you have to remember that Oregon is such a defensively sided map. Yeah, it is, recently. yeah. I mean, I know this isn't, you know, Tier 1 Pro League, but, I mean, it was the 70% oh. defensive win rate on this map. And Rapid's just proving why. The punch takes out the barricade. It only needs one because it's a really secondary ability. He yep. runs out, finds one off the back, and he does have a, a Z-Ping now onto the player in T1. So it's going to be interesting to see how Rapid can kind of play around this. And that, again, is just a player kind of by themselves. It's not good drone work from Marietta just yet, and they have not been able to clear this soft roam from Rapid. No, from the looks of it, they're just kind of holding angles. They still... Oh! Rapid gets another kill. You gotta deal with Same. the man, and he oh, gets a triple. Third. It's absolutely insanity, Aiden. They can't clear the man out. They're just letting him do whatever he wants here. Eight kills through three rounds. Rapid, have a day. Those were beautiful kills, to be honest. All from the exact same point as well. Don't do Front it again. Entrance. There's no way he finds no. this again. Although they have the can oh, the comms, the laser sight. You do see the laser oh. sight, Rapid. You know that he's around. This score playing split. The swing comes through, and Rapid ah. will eventually be taken care of. 
but this might kind of be a little bit of a situation where it's just simply too little too late. I mean, there's still a minute 30 in the round. Marietta's given up three picks, and it is mainly their site engagement that they've given up. There's no more Nomad. The vertical angle's been played. The call has been made out. They know one's working their way up armory stairs. And now it should be just an easy swing for Cory Rob, and it's going to be exactly that. Takes to the player, and now they just can worry about having this one Dokubi all alone, probably having to push up white stairs. Not a favorable Not a favorable one, one yep. Opting to go around to Armory now, I believe uh, Bottom Garage, but it is going to be the Castle with that ACOG site, who does know, however they do have the Soft Ping on him, they do have the Z Ping, the Dokubi does know the position, but as soon as this pick comes through, whether it is on the side of Marietta or not, the swing oh. will eventually come out, but look at just how much health got burned off of Pelican. He's not going to have an easy engagement, let alone 38 seconds yet left. Yes, attackers do have access to Cam, but Pelican's one shot, and if he doesn't know that Cory Rob's holding this vertical angle, this is going to be all she this wrote. This is going to be it. I believe he is not aware, and that should be the kill. Coming and that's Corey the Rob. kill. That's going to be just that. You know, God, I mean, so clean. the angles that they can pull off are amazing, to be honest. Right, but I mean, when you have that mute shotgun, that's exactly what he has to do. He yeah. has to use that shotgun to create those holes and those angles that are just aren't predictable. It was kind of weird. You would have thought the Dokubi saw the debris falling on the floor from the roof. Yeah. You might have thought with a mute holding top armory from previous comms, you would think that the vertical angle is being held. Especially when you, it, especially when you entered from main entrance as well. Like you could, just like you pointed out, the debris on the floor, and you could see it too as well. Yeah, like, I mean, it, I think it's just kind of a thing where Marietta just has to lock in a little bit more. They do use their tactical timeout. Yeah. And right now, if I'm Marietta, you just got to take it one round at a time. Right now, it's not looking good. I'll yeah. be honest. St. Clair's having your way with you. These rounds haven't even really been close, to be honest. There yeah. was sort of a little bit of a close one in basement. But even then, it was with a twitch with three seconds left, having to find a 1v2 and not having a diffuser down. It's most likely not going to go the way of Marietta. So with that being said... They need to lock in here. They need to try to find a way to clear out Rapid, especially this guy has just been able to do whatever he wants on this map. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be a very short night if they cannot deal with him. Oh yeah, that's for sure. Defenders I saw one of them is going for Clash. So the upgrades that we have are Echo. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of weird seeing a Clash on. A little more of a, yeah. uh, little more of a kind of, I don't want to say a meme lineup coming through for uh, Sinclair, <laughs> but they definitely are looking to have a little bit of fun in this uh, fifth round. They bring out the Clash from Salty Boy. Rapid most likely going to be playing behind that, using Ella with the Scorpion. Shout yep. out to my friends who, sadly, but, you know, is an Ella main. <laughs> maybe, maybe Rapid will do you a little bit of justice here, my friend, and, you know, we'll see if, uh, we'll see what happens, but... Right yeah, now, St. Clair, they look so good getting back on track. Oh, for I sure. Mean, they haven't been contested on these mirrors at all. You know, their power positions are not getting pulled out. The Doke V is not finding anything off the back of the calls. It's just not going all the way from Marietta. They really have to change things up here. Yeah, it really is. And as you can see, we are into the second match for Overwatch. And from the looks of it, it is Escort, I believe, the game mode. Yeah, so it is going to Hyper. They do have to try to capture the point first before they can escort the payload. But it is on King's Row. This is a heavily uh, defender-sided map, I do believe. Oh, it so is. I swear so. it is. Yeah, so at least it feels that way when I play it. <laughs> Looking on R6, though, they finally deal with Rapid. There we go. Marietta College. Good job there. So it is going to be Spoon to find the pickup. And now this could be any man's round. Rapid now gone. Now the second person they have to worry about the pop-off so far, Corey Rob and Charm especially. He's been playing so good on the Jaeger earlier. Mm -hmm. We saw him not being able to get cleared out in Kitchen. Marietta has to find a way to deal with Charm. For sure. And it looks like... What's the, where is the bomb at this point? Oh, so okay, it looks is, like, yeah, yeah, okay. It is going yeah. to be a basement defense. So again, this Come was a me. close one when it came to St. Clair, the echo cam inside of the sink in Freezer. It is going to be a little bit of a cheeky spot there. So we'll see how that works out for St. Clair. Mm -hmm. Marietta, though, most likely often kind of go for another freezer and laundry take, if I do say so myself. The Clash might give them a couple of problems just on time delay. But yeah, clearly holding Zofia, that down. With the Zofia as well, those concussive nades will make the Clash sort of go uh, to the side and expose her body a little bit from the shield. Yeah. So they will most likely try to do a little bit of a 3-2-1 push here if they can get this hatch open. They'll most likely try to just, yep, the Habana yep, will yep. do that there. And the 3-2-1 push will come through. Zofia should, if I'm correct. Well, no, they're not bringing the Zof, I don't believe. The Zof is on backstairs.
this is not good. You need to find a way to clear out the clash out of Freezer. You know, three on one is nice. Maybe they try to air trap the back, but Salty Boy will be able to play it safe and escape here. So interesting that they put the Sophia onto the back stairs. We'll see if it comes through. That should have probably been a kill onto Charm, and now Jox will make Marietta pay for it as he does take down Rez. And again, that's the next question. Charm taking out the backside push as well. So now you only have pressure coming from Freezer and Laundry. And it is going all the way of St. Clair. Koi Rob dealing the damage onto Funka, finds the headshot, takes the body. And now it's on yeah. the flash. Whipping out the SMG, you just gotta think they're gonna let the Clash try to go for this. No, they're just nope, gonna all they're just all going in there, yeah. Forcing four picks down the lane. It was definitely a little more of a meme comp. St. Clair having their way with Marietta so far. My god, I think it was just Jocks that just popped off right there. Yeah. Right, well, I mean, what are you, you know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> like, at this point, it's just, I, I mean, not to jinx anything, but I think the Saints has got this for R6. And it looks like we are continuing, and they ended up did capturing the Escort, but from the way it looks... I was gonna say, yeah. it, is, it is going to be the... It is, uh, just good. <laughs> just to go, oh, but now the Bob going down from the side of Invictus. Just come through from the Ramatra, dropping down Just gets now. annihilated though, that Bob. Yeah, she's just gotta get out of dodge, <laughs> right? I mean, that, that was just such a bad position for her yeah. to be in. And it looks like she will just accept her fate as yep. all of St. Clair just hunts her down. <laughs> Slowly making their way, uh, pardon? Good time here, Aiden. I mean, they're, they're doing they're doing sort of okay right now. They'd probably like to get the second one quickly, but I mean, Aiden, pointing out some alt utility. I mean, let's just take a look at this. I mean, Minnesota State, uh, they do have soon to be the beat, but look at the alts they just wasted and didn't find the control. They wasted yeah, the that's... They wasted their mob, and they wasted their freaks. Yeah, and I don't. The damage should be going down. This is not good for Minnesota. Yeah. What a shot, though. <laughs> this. I mean, oh my god, uh, that was absolutely disgusting. But this point still stands. Especially with Overwatch, this is a team-based game. In order, if you want to win, you have to rely on your teammates as well. You got to work as a team. Right, but I mean, but don't don't count. I was just saying. Like, oh we're yeah. Talking about uh, St. Clair, you know, St. Clair ult utility. Wow, Minnesota has nothing. They still hold. St. Yep. Clair did a good job of not burning too much. I believe it was only a screen and overclock that did come through on the side there. But as we get back into some R6, it seems that yep, T3 clearance has been established. And now on this, I believe kitchen meeting site. Yes. It looks like it. Yeah. Will be Thatcher to go out and they will have control of Attic Wall. Such an important job, but the K trick coming oh. through from Salty Boy. I did not expect that. I didn't know that was going down, but that is a beautiful play. And now they are most definitely aware of it. They'll try to do it again. They'll try to do it again. Yeah. Feeling that it won't happen. The K goes down, and if they don't take this off the wall, it will go. No, a perfectly oh. timed Thatcher need to cancel out. Beautiful job there from Marietta State, and now they have the wall open to get into meeting. Do anything with the C4? No. It's shot out of mid-air, I mean, <laughs> for reaction time of that Thermite is that would have been the pick coming through. Rapid, don't tell me you're going for a run out here. Salt's going to get traded out by Rez, and is that the run out from Rapid? Yeah, I Rapid. believe it was. It was. It was out of small tower. You can't let that happen if you're Marietta. And now finding yourself on a 3v4, you need to try to find the next pick. Attackers have dropped. Jogs able to retreat diffuser. down, but Attackers it's just not looking good. Diffuser. We still have F knots on the site for St. Clair, so it's just such a hard, you know, ask. Funka making. Funka that getting that kill. Yep. We Something, are we are in a three v three situation as well. It still is like an equal. Yeah, and I, I was gonna say, Aiden, you know, right now, if you're Marietta State, you know, what's your next move? Two smokes, three flashes in pocket, but like. You gotta find a way to deal with these f knots. You gotta find a way to force a charm in this flank. Quite Rob getting another kill. It is now a 2v3, though, however, and it looks like Jox does get that, and it is now a 3v1. However, but can he get in there to pipe that Dom? Aware of the air, they're aware of the air jab that came down through E box. Mm -hmm. So the Nomad is aware of the position of the Fenrir right now, but has to wait on Charm for the swing. The flick comes through Charm, kind of potatoing oh. there, finds the shots a little bit, but the double, the, I was gonna say the support should come through from Jox. <laughs> double swing, and it will be St. Clair to clean up and get another round. What? 
for sure. The way that St. Clair played that as well, they haven't controlled the bomb because the bomb was right in there, right, right in front of them. They had it easy, defense easy. Right, and I mean, it, it was just kind of a tale of time, but as we do get a, into our Overwatch match again, it is now Minnesota State trying out on the offense, and if we look at the score, Minnesota, you really stepped up to the plate to play here. For sure. Because they actually held the uh, Saints to only one point of capture. The Lamp able to keep the Ramatra alive as he does go through damage resistance. Now shielding up, trying to find a pick onto the Zarya, getting oh, rid of the movement with the snare. He finds one, focusing on to the Torp turret now. And that's a very clean attack coming through from the side of, of uh, Minnesota. For I, sure I it is, and it does, mate, yeah. To find the pick on <laughs> <laughs> and from the looks of it, it looks like they did end up capturing the payload. Now, what is interesting is is St. Clair's defense. Like this map, I feel like the defense is on their side. However, like I was saying earlier, yeah. Look at how much time this whole state has to this payload. And if you're going to be popping My shots like God. that, Victus, it's going to be a short night live for this academy team because Minnesota just looks absolutely amazing right now. This Ramatra should find the Can pick get that kill? the Zarya. Yep, yep, there it is. That's not a good loss. It should be the Moira who I believe doesn't have a fade. Yep, Moira no fade. What do you get? A running headless chicken. <laughs> Able to take out the Torp Turret as well, just clearing out some easy utility. The Saints have to push this right now. I mean, they are getting kind of ready, but uh, the freeze on the side of Minnesota, I don't want to say it's over. I have seen crazy things happen, but yeah. this well, is looking very, very good so far for Minnesota. Back on Siege, though. Rapid getting the first kill. So, so this one's looking a little more exciting, St. Clair. They immediately deal with the Jagger. And Salty Boy, this is what I wanted to see. They do bring out the Deimos. It is going to be rapid Whoa. to fall, though, from Spoon. That Goyo is such an elite gun on the side of the Vector with that ACOG. Deimos having the tracker. He oh. has the pistol, whips it out, and he is able to find Surprise one onto there. Spoon. I mean, uh, what do you do there if you're Goyo? You can't do anything. There is literally no way you win that gunfight, or you should win that gunfight. Like that pistol's just overpowered. And the live My track God. too. Yeah. Are they aware of Corey Rob's position? Again, because the black glass isn't broken on that kid's window, they aren't aware of the sound. They are aware of the little hole though in the window. I believe it was Pelican who saw that. So interesting to see if anyone will swing onto that, but I do not suspect that Corey Rob will hold that angle for long. Yep, exactly. Yeah, no. He's just gonna move to add a window try to gather some intel, but the Q-Jammer will stop that flashing through, but it does get hit by the Aegir ADS. And you have to think that with Corey Rob vaulting through Attic, that he has to take a swing. Not going to go the way, though, of St. Clair. Marietta does find the pick, but the F-Nots working against them as well. St. Clair, though, they are on match point to try to take it flawless. Pelican, not willing to let that happen, finds his second kill now with that SMG-11. A beautiful peek and kill onto that master bedroom wall. For sure. And we are at a 3v2 as well. However, they are spaced out. See, here's the problem, right? The, the, the Deimos is still on the board. Now, there are yeah. only 39 seconds, and you do still have to get rid of the f nots. So, again, if I was to make a prediction, this round should go on the side of Marietta. Mm -hmm. But now Mute has been targeted by Deimos, and oh, that is going to be the kill that comes through. It is going to be Salty Boy to keep the Saints in this. With 20 seconds left, they're just going to use their scans over and over again. Comms going through, where is the ping going to happen? It is the f not that will have Deimos trapped, but My the kill God. comes through from Jox! Don't tell me that they can clutch this! Nine seconds left, you have to get a plan! Someone's got a plan! The plan right beside games, and right beside the attic wall. My apologies, Deimos swings oh, the pistol! Salty he is boy. going to take out Rez! St. Clair, clean <laughs> up on the side of attack! They force the 2v3 in their favor, and they take the flawless victory on map one. My god, and I just got- you gotta admit, I think that pistol just carried that round. Like, legit, it did! That's crazy! That's <laughs> just, uh, that's- that's why you want to ban Deimos. Oh yeah, my god. Morgan, which I did say the Saints weren't going to do. I said they were going to ban the Flores out in attack, and sure enough, they did exactly Yeah, they did that. it, yeah. Great predictions, to be honest. <laughs> right, but I mean, uh, it, it's just because, like, Flores is so strong in every single attack on Oregon. There's yeah. so many power positions that he can clear out. And honestly, that has to be the tail of the tape. 
they were not able to deal with Rapid on the side of Marietta early. Yeah. And Rapid was able to just kind of pop off for the first uh, defense. Mm -hmm. And then after, they can't clear the power positions. They don't have the Flores. And it ended up kind of being a little more team-oriented on the side of St. Clair. And they were able to take it through. Yeah, for sure. And it looks like we are into our first match of Call of Duty. St. Clair going up against Purdue Northwest. And it looks like we are playing hardpoint at the moment. And it looks like St. Clair has the hardpoint at first. Right now, St. Clair, something I want to point out. I do point it out whenever we cast them on COD. They are such a good respawn team. Priestley, you're absolutely disgusting. Finds two off the back of the rival nine on the jump shot. And now he's going to try to look for a third. Just trying to stay calm, letting his HP regen. Mm -hmm. Has that, you know, control coming in from his teammates. But, I mean, they, they just need to try to clear him out. They're not going to be able to. Oh. The double kill with Ready. Don't oh, the triple kill. Triple. That was absolutely disgusting by the side of Priestley. As he stays up 6-1 and one so far. Man, that's just amazing play, to be honest. And as you can see, we are in Rio. So, Rival 9, main. Yeah. With, especially with this map, close quarters, that's the key. Wow, that's just dirty. Right underneath the car. Right, but I mean... Uh... It, uh, St. Clair, they are usually so dominant on these uh, on these uh, respawn maps. So they so are. The takeaway from St. Clair is that their uh, I would say their least uh, effective game mode for them is S and D. So yes. that is usually going to see how a team can compete with them. Now you know it's going to be a good matchup if a team can take a respawn game mode like Hardpoint or Control off of St. Clair. That's when you know you're in for a little bit of a doozy. For sure, but yes. It should be known that you kind of can predict these St. Clair series if they can just take the SND match. So we will have to see after this hard point game is done what SND tells us from that. Mm -hmm. But so far, one thing can be very made clear is that Priestley is just, you know, like he has all season, he's popping just off right popping now. popping off, my God. I think it was like two, or uh, not two weeks ago. But, you know, the last time I casted these guys, I mean, Priestley almost dropped a nuke. We were literally watching uh, it. I believe it was me and uh, Theo casting. But, I mean, this this player is just absolutely disgusting. Don't get me wrong. All four players on the St. Clair team are great. But Priestley is just such a highlight player. He's such an enjoying watch and just such an enjoying player to cast as well. Hats off to him and hats off to the St. Clair team mm -hmm. for making such entertaining games happen here. But... As we go through to the hard point, it is going to be Purdue Northwest that have control right now. They are building. It's going to be Arrows and Echo and H2O doing all they can to try to keep this control. And right now, the Saints have to try to find a way to take back. For sure. And from the looks of it, it looks like KB is the only one using an assault rifle. Which right, is kind of... Is, is it a little bit odd? I know there are some points on this map, though, however, that do require an assault rifle. But using an assault rifle on most of these points are close quarters. That's a little unheard of, to be honest. Right, but I mean, yeah, that's kind of the whole reason why the Rival Nines do come out. Most of yeah. these engagements are going to be around cars, around yeah. buildings, yep. in rooms, small hallways. The TK there from Brandon with the grenade, nothing new there. I've been commenting about how that's been happening a little more often. Yeah. A little bit of a funny moment there for the Saints, but it does not stop the fact that they're contesting this hard point and they're doing a good job of it. Brandon Priestley able to clear out KB with another one just to boot. And now, St. Clair, they remain on Behind top of boxes. this hard point with control. For sure. Can he get the double kill? We got one on the drop shot. Oh, the maybe. The no. The car, but the support does come through. Mm -hmm. KB. Stun now is H2O. Has to try to find the flank, but I believe his position is aware of from Nacho Slay. And it definitely will be calmed out. Yep. Ren to find one. Priestley with a double of his own. Such just an amazing team to watch. They're doing such a good job so far of controlling this hard point. And with 10 seconds left, you have to think that Purdue is going to start to rotate to where the next hard point's going to be. No, no, honestly, no point in sticking around to try to figure out if they can take one second left. If Priestley got that kill, I might have started screaming. That, was absolutely, <laughs> that would have been absolutely amazing. But good job on Purdue to deal with them there. But they have a long climb up the mountain. If they, they do, want to get yeah. This game. Moving on to the next point. Looks like it's uncontested at the moment. With what? Brandon and Presley both. Oh, sorry. There's three of them. Echo yeah, picking off. I, I was going to say, uh, St. Clair, usually when they are on this point, they do like to just camp in the bridge. They usually yeah. just kind of force one to have the hard point control go down. And then they like to see it on, sit on bridge. Brandon with a double as well. Nacho finding another one. Priestley gets shut down. And Kaiser going absolutely massive as he finds a double as well. Mm -hmm. And I agree, I, I agree with that. Having at least three people or at least two people on the bridge kind of defending and having one guy on point. Because really, underneath that bridge, you got no cover except those two pillars. Right, but I was going to say, we would have 
point out the fact that Kaiser right now is on a five kill streak. He, he is. has cut through this St. Clair lineup. Ishua will get shut down and traded back after he did find a pick. Brandon, the one to do so. And now it is the bridge control. KB picking off. Can he get the kill? And he does. Of course he does. KB also just so good as well in his own right. Such a good player in his own right. 17 and 6 right now. The best on the team for now. And I mean, right now, if the Saints just kind of keep this play up, it should uh, it should pretty much kind of close out soon. Mm -hmm. Brandon doing a good job finding the double. He does get traded back, though, from Kaiser, who has been putting up, just trying to fight for his life, trying to see if he can keep his team in this thing. But so far, it's just kind of been the tail of the tape of St. Clair with overwhelming pressure, doing good on their stuns, playing around their gunfights so well off the, pl off the back of some hero plays from Priestley as well, just to kind of hype the crowd up. Oh, yeah, for real. And it looks like going to the next point, maybe. Nope, they still are. Right now, if I if I was if I was Purdue, I would honestly be going to the next point. Like it it is. Well, you could, but I mean, if you look at the pressure that Saint Clair has, you yeah. want to try to even just take a second off yeah. just so you can delay a point. They're not going to be able to do so. One eighty six to sixty five, and there it is. You did. They do, yeah. Right they do end so up getting it. There you go, Aiden. Good shot on the prediction. They do hit the rotate, which was the right play to make. They do have control now, but if Purdue wants to win this thing, they quite literally need to control the next at least forty seconds of this yeah, point, that's... counting down if they want to even have a shot of this thing. So with no control going down right now and the time ticking down on this. It's not looking very good. Trade's going back and forth. It is going to be Brennan to pick up one. Still alive right now. Priestley trying to find anything, but he gets stunned and blown up. Utility being thrown at him. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was almost like if Purdue just had something to throw, they threw it at him. So good job there to deal with Priestley. Nacho trying to find one onto the back, but it's not going to happen. KB trying to find anything with that assault rifle. Has the long angle, finds the pickup. Priestley with an aid kill of his own. And St. Clair have this control. Purdue needs to force them off in these next six seconds, I think. Or will they get stuck at 199? I believe they will be stuck at 198 as they do have those what? final two seconds that did not uh, happen on the control. But there it is. And it is going to be St. Clair who have the next control. So 50 more points now for St. Clair. All that is needed to take this uh, map or match right now. And that is going to be KB on a disgusting lineup, but he isn't going to find the two kills. Knows that the third is around, has the pixel, knows that he saw the third, swinging around the escalator, but it is not going to happen. Sliding down the stairs is oh, Kaiser that was, yeah. to get shut down. That was smart. All, all, there was three of them all push in. It, that, that was fantastic. And they do end up gaining the, the point. However, with St. Clair with 223, they now just reach, Purdue just reached the 100 point. Right, so I mean, just look at, you know, KB, Priestley, they're doing such a good job, both over 20 right now, Brandon soon to join them, and I mean, Nacho's not far behind himself as well, it's just an almost combined, just assault from St. Clair, they're doing oh, such yeah. a good job with a combined 82 kills right now, if my math has served me correctly on the board so far. I was number 83. I mean, right now, St. <laughs> Clair are doing such a good job of getting these picks down. 231, and they still have hard point control. They do. This is so tough for Purdue to try to clear out. KB trying to delay time behind the car. It is going to be the triple kill for the team on the side of Purdue. They do deal one, but Brandon finds two, not able to find a third. It should be Purdue's control. Nacho swinging around the car, has to try to find one. Second one comes out of the door. He's aware of one position. Finds one in the car. The trade does not come through just yet. It will KB be is rushing in. there to yep. tra trade out St. Clair. They have the control they need to, I believe, take this away unless Purdue has different plans. Sure, and they look they do look like they gained back that point at the last set. Oh, well, 10 seconds left, to be honest. Right, but I mean, that's going to be all shit. And out. that's it. The second the trophy systems go <laughs> yep. down, those stuns, those Semtexes, they all get canceled out. It does not matter. They will not fall through. St. Clair with a really good job of utilizing their own utility to counter out Purdue's utility in yeah. the final place there. And they just did a very good job overall, overall of taking that game. For sure. And we're going back to Rainbow Six Siege now. It looks like they banned Maverick and Demos. Demos. Yeah. So, you know, again, especially after what we saw in the last, yeah. the last round... Yeah, Marietta definitely has some PTSD of what just happened there. So no <laughs> surprise that the Demos was going to get banned out. And it is going to be Clubhouse that St. Clair does go to. So I believe unless this goes to a map three, we will not be seeing, let's say if St. Clair takes this map, mm -hmm. that is going to be no cafe, 
no skyscraper. Everything that I was saying was lies and deceit. But now as we get into the band phase, <laughs> we see that a zombie is going to be banned out as well. So, I, you know, we can talk about a zombie as well for a little bit. Those Kiba barricades, a little bit of a nerf where you they are now vulnerable to bullets. So you can shoot them out. Yeah. But it does require a full mag unless a bullet of higher caliber is used than like, you know, your standard assault rifle or mm -hmm. your standard SMG. So it is going to be interesting to see how the change happens, but we don't got to worry about it now because she's banned. And for the right reasons, Azami is so good at holding down spots, especially, you know, you think about legendary Azami spots on Clubhouse, you immediately think top rafters in cash CCTV room, the top rafters being the top of the garage. Yeah. So, you know, it is going uh, to most likely be the ban of the right choice. The last band coming out on Wamai as well, and I believe we do have a tech pause. Yep, we yeah, do game see up. Game Crash coming in from the side of, I believe it was... Oh, okay, yep, okay. It was one of our players on St. Clair, yeah. So, in case they find figure that out, you know, we are most likely going to be tossing it um, to uh, Overwatch. It should be Overwatch, on, to be honest. Or COD, maybe, yeah. one of the two. But we'll figure that one out in the future. Um, I believe Overwatch also has a pause. So unless we kick it to COD, we're most likely going to take a short break. Yeah. And we'll be back in a minute. All right. Welcome back, St. Clair. We are here with COD as our other two games are in a little bit of uh, some pauses right now. So it is going to be SND now on the side of St. Clair versus Purdue. For sure. And just like you were saying earlier, or I have seen it because I do observe COD, searching is, SND is kind of a hard game mode for us Saints, to be honest. There's always There always seems to be some back and forth or just some have some trouble with that mode i wouldn't necessarily say it's like a mode that the saints are bad at again this yeah, is just, it's such just a yeah. good cod team but if it is going to be any mode that they show the most weakness on it is it, is, it will be snd yes but right now kb's making us eat our words as he finds the first two with minimal effort plant does go down and now st Clair can just try to hold this one out hold that plant too and of course, Eros going up on that uh, rooftop. That's such. Oh, and he does get picked off. Right, can't pull it across. The calm comes through on the last player, and that's yeah. going to be all she wrote. Saint yep. Clair taking that first round. So, pretty clean stuff so far from our Saints. And uh, if this is anything to look back on, it's uh, it's going to be a pretty nice night in the office for our varsity team. Oh yeah, for sure. And it looks like we did end up starting into our game for our six. Did that just... I swear that explosion on Jacuzzi Wall just happened. That's what I thought too, yep. Yeah. The Saints have seen this glitch happen before, if that did go through. Okay, no, the explosion actually through. did happen. Okay. A couple of games ago, as Cory Rob picks up one of the SMG-12, there was an explosion on Jacuzzi Wall from a thermite charge, and it didn't let the Saints walk in. Yep. So I, it was kind of a little bit of a weird one. I didn't really know what was happening there. I've never seen that before uh, yeah. on that specific wall, so a little bit of a weird one. Funka on the Solus, and it is going to be the Mute that has been taken out. Let's get into lineups right now. Some people are probably looking at the uh, lineup and saying, Jock's on Grim. 
Grim, I mean, man, it's a weird operator, especially in the ranked meta, not getting very much play. Oh, no, not at all, yeah. I will tell you right now, he is a decent operator as the Jackal does engage in the gunfight with the Solus, losing out. Funka should find the pick there, but it seems that Salty Boy might be in a little bit of a revivable position. The Saints, I think, are trying to hold the vertical angle. No, not quite. The down player is just behind this door, so will be picked up by the Solus. The trade will up, not yep. come back through immediately. But now that the Saints know where the Solus is, they can start running down top rafters, trying to clear the Solus. Funka finds another one, though. And before being traded out, getting banged for your buck as a roamer picks off the Jackal and picks off the buck. So what I was saying previously, though, real quick, is to explain on that Grim, he is a really good operator for engaging sight. When that execute does come through, he is one of the best in the game of mm -hmm. using that uh, Hive launcher to just kind of get defenders out of comfortable positions that they like to sit in, forcing them into uncomfortable gunfights in the favor of the attack. Yeah. And that is kind of what leads that through. The execute is, I believe, still... Oh, no. That is going to be because Rapid got picked off. Uh, he was the only operator with hard breaching devices. So this is going to be a little bit of a messy execute from St. Clair. They do have the Dokubi still, but only one call in pocket. And with 20 seconds left, you have to think this is going to be the round of Marietta. Barring a miracle, the down though through Moto. That's not good. Pelican going down. 10 seconds left. The Kwan Hive Launcher revealing the position. Core Rob with a double as well. Double they have the 2v2 now. 9 seconds left. Rez has to try to swing onto Church. Has to try to take the gunfight. He is going to go down now. And now Core Rob has to supply the coverage on the plant. Charm on the plant. Yep. behind the church bar. It is going to be right beside the Moto door. Actually, my mistake, but he's holding the wrong angle onto he's Blue. The C4 coming down from Spoon. The double back now onto the swing from Basement Hall. And now, swing onto Moto. He knows that Charm's here. Charm playing very, very passive on one shot as well, mind you. 31 in the mag, so he does have the full, but it seems Defenders like right now he's guessing the movement. Heard from Moto. Oh! He finds the headshot! Let's go! An absolutely beautiful play from Charm. Swinging one way, swinging the other. Here's the movement. The crouch into the pre-fire. Beautiful play there from St. Clair in a round that they should not have won. For real, seriously. With the amount of health that he had as well, facing full health, pretty much amazing. And it does look like we are back in both games for Overwatch and COD. Overwatch, we are playing Flashpoint. This is a game mode that I kind of have trouble with, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. This game mode is, me and, me and it are not that well like right, it's so i mean flashpoint is just the same sort of thing as your control but yeah. the first team to win three flashpoints i believe takes the map or the matchup there oh so yeah it is going to be minnesota state university who does take the first one and now we have st Clair having to try to rebuttal finding one of their own i do want to get into the lineup though because you know most people do see the junker queen here and they get a little bit confused junker queen is good on flashpoint just because with the lucio she can kind of like be a very strong aggressor into yeah. these points and holding them down is no issue as well as you know you got to get in close so the axe swing does then deal that damage and the no healing as well yeah for sure so it is a, a pretty good tank to be running but on the other side of minnesota state they do have the ramatra and right now if you look at the scoreboard up top if you are minnesota state and you take this matchup it is best of five i believe so this should kind of be it if they can win this flashpoint game yeah for sure i just want to point out what you did say about the uh, Junker Queen, especially for Flashpoint, I either find that either Junker Queen or Orissa is really good for, for like defense. Right, most teams will usually lean to that Junker Queen though, yeah. just because of that anti-healing that she can't yeah, put exactly, down. Yeah, exactly, uh, yeah. So it will usually be that result. Mm -hmm. uh, especially just because the Lucio can speed her in, and of course, her battle cry, like her, her yell, oh, right, yeah. also speeds her up as well. So you're just kind of going team speed for St. Clair, uh, as well as the uh, movement that can come through with the Sojourn as the overclock does go active. Oh my god, able just to pick him off. The BAP, no work there from his lamp either, as that will go down before him. The tank kill from Grubby, and that should be it. The Holy Juan finding an absolutely disgusting headshot. Another rail shot goes down on to Foost and Grubby able to find the dash onto the tracer to pick up the last one. Just beautiful plays right there to be honest. It was sort of I was gonna say, sorry, I'll let you go. They only had to waste a coalescence and an overclock as well to get it. Yeah. Especially with Soldier on as well. I believe when she first came out too, like just her over like her ability was so overpowered. Just that, right. oh, that constant overcharge is is amazing, and if you if you have good accuracy and yeah, just just honestly, just good accuracy is what you need. 
that Especially was, a l I was going to say, that's a little bit of an unfortunate miss on the pulse bomb by Invictus there. But backing up on what your point uh, is, they did recently buff the pellet spray. I remember yeah. they kind of gave Sojourn a huge nerf earlier, I believe, uh, like maybe a year ago. Yep. And then they've recently, you know, uh, within that same year, I believe, rebuffed her. Not to the point where she was on release, because that was absolutely disgusting. My God, but yeah. But they've given her a little bit of that back. So she has kind of become a decent choice for DPS players. Oh, for sure. Especially when you look at this sort of DPS meta that we're in right now with that healing reduction from damage coming in from dps players which yes was just nerfed down to i believe 15 percent i believe it was yes yeah. from the last patch not this one but again that doesn't mean nothing like that is still heavy damage that comes through and if it was released at 15 percent instead of 20 percent, i still think you would still be hearing the same sort of like headlines from the overwatch community about oh the yeah we're in. yeah for sure and from the looks of it, it looks like St. Clair did end up capturing that flashpoint as well. And it looks like they are early on the next one. Yes, it is. But it does unlock in 14 seconds. So yeah. nothing big there that they have to worry about. They do have the Coalescence and the uh, Dragon Blade as well in order to try to stall out the Minnesota attack. But right now they can kind of sit. Overclock will be ready as well for the Holy Juan. Genji Blade does come down, able to find the pick onto the Lucio. Not much else, but it's hard when you're dealing with a Tracer in the back. Tracer's such a meta character to run right now, and especially if you can find flanks and picks onto healers like the Moira there, it just shows why she's such a good character to run in these uh, in this meta. Oh yeah, for sure. And St. Clair, it does, they do end up capturing that point. Or sorry, getting on point. I was going to say, the high oh, noon is going to come noon? out at some point. But I, and the Ramatra shield able to just kind of keep the Cassidy alive as well. Now, that I will say, while that high noon didn't find very many kills, the whole point of that was just to drive St. Clair off of that flashpoint, yeah. right? The high noon forces St. Clair to back up and give space to Minnesota State. So now they can just kind of sit and take and build percentage. Damage screen going down to delay time as well. And they still have an Annihilation and a Pulse Bomb to work with. They do. Going back on the side of Siege, St. Clair up 2-0 right now in that prep phase. I believe it is going to be the Church Arsenal defense yet again. Unless I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. The Jacuzzi wall being reinforced once as well. So most likely just St. Clair Romer trying to... Or sorry, not St. Clair Romer, the Marietta College. Romer trying to stay up there. They are going to have the Valk on to the backstairs and also the Solus holding down from Cash. So St. Clair's got to deal with that quick. But... A decent start with a breach on the construction wall. Mm -hmm. For sure. I just, I also do want to point out, uh, for those who just want to watch just the COD or Overwatch or just R6 by itself, you could just do an exclamation mark streams in the chat and it will give you the links to them. Right. And I'd, uh, I mean, I'd love to talk about that, but uh, you, you just brought it up. So s sorry. I was going to say back on to Siege. Cory Rob finds a pick onto, I believe, was Solus. I believe you it was, yes. Solus so early. That is not acceptable. <laughs> you can't have that if you're Marietta. And now you're just kind of forced to turtle up on defense. If these players haven't gone back downstairs yet, it's going to be a long day. And they have. So it is going to be the Goyo holding down blue. Just kind of sitting near Boiler. And now Pelican sitting in photo wow, as well. The site should be found rapid. That's when you're going to want back. But it's okay because you still have time with a minute 15 remaining and man advantage. Uh -huh. They still have enough what they need. They have the hatches. They have the grim. They have what they need to make the execute. And with another hard breaching charge as well, you have to assume that's moto hatch that's probably getting opened up there. Yep. It is going to be just that. So that is mostly going to be the engagement. But no drone out happens. You just saw the player in Goyo, in in Boiler, how do you, in Blue, how do you let that slip up? Words can't describe it, actions do. Res is able to find one onto the back of St. Clair, who just kind of had their pants down. <laughs> Funny analogy. Right, but I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, he totally caught him with their pants down. The double drop now through Moto Hatch. The pre fire does come oh, through. Oh, Pelican with a pick onto one. Should have the second as well. Yeah, the does swing the double, yep. does pick it up. Beautiful job there from Marietta. The pick comes through. Jock's able to find one onto Pelican. The retray. Does he have the shots onto Rez? No, but he does have the diffuser. Footholes, though, will be the undoing of his life being made by the Deagle on the side of that Valkyrie with a beautiful angle all the way from Arsenal. <laughs> Going into round four, I believe St. Clair, yes, yeah, St. Clair has won two out of, oh, sorry, two out of three. And from what it looks like for Call of Duty, yeah, St. Clair with four out of three. 
have you... Brandon getting picked off. Right, but I mean, we were touching on this before, right? We said that Purdue, if you do want to show uh, an interesting series, they will most likely take off an SD game from St. Clair. Yeah. Now, they are losing that still, but the whole point yeah. is that, you know, they're, they're definitely contesting it a lot more. So it seems that our point about that is stood. What does also have to stand is St. Clair on the overtime of their lives right now. They need to try to take this. The beat comes through, but not fast enough to save the junk queen. High Noon going down with the coal, uh, with the Annihilation. High Noon finding one onto Injustice should be the point cleanup. And Minnesota State will take this flashpoint and potentially the final one if they can hold. If they could. Keep in mind, though, St. Clair has a 99% on it, so... But. Yeah, but I mean, you, you know, it, it was good alts that, you know, Minnesota did end up having to burn there. Yeah. But they do have a damage screen to at least stall one push or at least make things interesting. St. Clair doesn't have as much time as you necessarily think. It's already at 45%, building up to 50. St. Clair is not in a position to even have a take just yet. They're just kind of, you know, farming for alt charge. The Moira is finally going to make the first engagement. Pulse Bomb does go down on the side of St. Clair, but it's not going to find anyone. Damage screen, and there's the hold from Minnesota State. And that's perfect. It's what they need to do. They're finding damage now onto G-Scales. Justice now low. The Ramatra with the form change. Being healed up on the Moira, but you can't keep up the healing for long. Moira's not, not, uh, not a uh, person that can do that. High Noon, can they find oh. the pick? No, it is going to find one onto Bap. And the damage that goes down from Forgiveness, or sorry, the Holy Wand on from that High Noon, is just enough to force back all of the members of Minnesota State, or at least make them low enough for the wipe away. For sure. And now, next flashpoint is the last flashpoint. Each team having captured two flashes. So really, this really makes the game. It really matters. I mean, yeah. it's, series, it's also series point for St. Clair College. So you really do have to play this one smart here. Minnesota State doing an absolutely bang up job so far of just kind of forcing St. Clair's hand, not just this game in general, but this entire series. Oh, for sure. This one's definitely a little bit closer, but you know, nonetheless, it's it's a really impressive showing from Minnesota. Say so the pick on the jumper should be found, but as we touch back on that, I want to point out just the absolute dominance that St. Clair had in Siege that round, as we saw with the post plant and. There we go. Look at so, that. you know, Six we point out three. that it's 4-3 to three for uh, for St. Clair on a Purdue. And then St. Clair says, well, Aiden, Patrick, where'd you talking some smack? So we're going to clean <laughs> this one up real quick. They find the S&D game. And uh, they make Purdue have to climb out of one huge mountain. Or climb up one huge mountain. Oh, yeah. Or try sure. to find themselves back in that match. Well, from what it looks like, it looks like it is going through to my prediction. The St. Clair just easily sweeping well, listen, I mean, you never want to count any yeah, team out on this level, yeah. but uh, from right now, uh, who's who's going to be the person to tell you wrong? Is anyone objecting right now? Because if you are, you might want some, uh, some new <laughs> prescriptions on your glasses if you have some, because this is not looking good for on the side of COD. But on for St. Clair on the side of Overwatch, it's not looking good for them, because 2-2, two, two, and you look at the control right now, let's take a look at the alt economy. The Annihilation goes down. I mean, this is just not looking good for St. Clair. The, almost a team kill coming through. The triple kill does go through. Minnesota doing such a beautiful job. And I'm going to call it there. That is going to be all she wrote unless I have the caster curse of my life. Nope, St. Clair opting, I believe, to even just give that position away. Cosmo has a beat. Maybe he can get in. Could they maybe but he's going maybe. to die for his efforts. Overtime ticker is coming down. The Tracer just has to try just to force. But in a 1v3, yep. it's not going to happen. The hold does come through from the Genji, I believe, though. Forcing overtime. And hold oh. on. Now a little more of an attack from St. Clair. But the beat going down from Minnesota State will seal the fate of that matchup. It will seal the fate of that series. And Shout out to Minnesota State, because they just put St. Clair Academy through the ringer. They did. It has been a fantastic game, though, you got to admit. Oh, absolutely. It's not every day that you see the Saints get absolutely swept. So you have to kind of, you know, take those special chances and give the shout outs to the enemy schools. They show up, they compete, they play all the time, setting up these amazing matches. And if they take a series or a game off of St. Clair, you got to give them props, oh, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. So, it is back to our siege, Bob, though, and as Marietta College tries to figure out if they can do just that, what I was talking about earlier, taking a game off of St. Clair, it's not going to be like that if this keeps up, because that's your Jaeger gone, and your Maestro's low as well. Those evil eyes, remember, if that Maestro dies, you will not be able to shoot out of those. Gone six, able to take out the first one, I believe. 
clearly Alibi sees that well. drone, yeah. So, I mean, let's kind of take a look at this right now. Minute 53 on the clock. You have a Maestro low, your Jaeger's dead. You have contest uh, contesting points from both bedroom and gym window. Yep. St. Clair have all the avenues open that they pretty much yeah. want. The Dude, Thermite man. able to try to get the wall, whatever wall he's trying to breach right now. And yeah, just with that Osa shield. I mean, they just have such big control right now. Rapid able to kind of find himself in cash, CC. Pelican in a really awkward spot, just kind of behind the couches, playing inside a logistics rotate, and it is going to be Rez that does end up getting found out by Charm. I want to give a little shout out to Charm, obviously. We know we saw him have kind of the clutch of his life earlier, and he's doing so good this game and this series, and all of the Saints are really just kind of coming through and making it happen. Diffuser going down, Rapid with Rapid a triple kill. Goes. I mean, this is just the best the Saints have looked uh, that I've cast them in a long time. I know they've kind of been on a little bit of a roll, but I haven't had the chance to cast them since then. They are showing me exactly why they've made the changes from the fall that they were having earlier in the season when I, when, you know, last time I cast them. Yeah. They're really showing some insane improvements, and you they have to are. tip it off to the coach and just the team in general for banding together, thinking, guys, how can we get the ball back rolling again? And, I mean, they're showing a great job of doing just that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Moving back to call, it looks like we are in control. Yeah, and, I mean, like I said, it is usually St. Clair who does come up on top of these control maps. You know, last time I casted COD, we had a pretty insane uh, control map that did go down. Uh, it was St. Clair with a what, I 1.4 seconds left that was able to find the capture and bring uh, uh, out the lives as well to win it. Mm -hmm. So it was it was a very entertaining game. Control being a little bit of a weird one because you can capture the A and B site to try to win, or you could also do it via lives and timer. They yep. work together, obviously. So by the time that two minutes is down, no matter what the control is like, whatever team has the more lives remaining will take the round. St. Clair already have A control though, and now they're looking to build on B. Oh. Presley does end up getting that kill, although that's their that's pretty much their spawn. That was, back that back yeah. alley right there, that is their spawn. Right, I mean I, I was gonna say I, I think you're right. I think the Saints are quite literally for a minute there, they were literally spawn camping for New Northwest. So they just have such control over over the site. It's going to be hard to take it off of St. Clair. The drop shot, though, coming in from Kaiser. Beautiful job there to get rid of Priestley. Yep. And now stuck in a little bit of a weird angle with Nacho and KB bearing down the sights. Oh. Don't tell me Nacho missed the guy. He's actually just going to go to dash right after him. Says KB, that's your responsibility. KB will find the pick, but H2O and Eros will shut down him and Priestley. It's just being pure chaotic, to be honest. And it looks like they have two ticks. Oh, no, sorry. A tick and a third, it looks like. Pretty much a tick and like two thirds. Yeah. yeah, they almost have that second tick now for St. Clair on that. Control. However, do look at lives, though. I was going to say, Saint Clair having it might not even have to come to that. Seven, yes. Because St. Clair might just be able to get rid of these seven lives. There's one, and oh, that's going two. to be a second as well. Nacho, you are absolutely crazy. KB helping out as well. Kaiser with three, though, finds the triple. Purdue has no more spawns, by the way. With Brandon... Stunned out. This could be what they need, but as the picks do come through, it is going to be all oh advantage to St. Clair. They find three, and that should be the one last remaining player in Kaiser. Position Beautiful. is known. It is going to be the swing, I believe, from KB to deal with the last one. And St. Clair are going to take their first point on control. And I mean, St. Clair's looking to take their fifth round right now because this has just been an absolutely disgusting attack from St. Clair. There's Grim, like I was talking about, the execute. That operator doing such a good job of being an amazing execute off. The wall bank coming through for Pelican, though. And now Rest finds one of his own. Hold on. The oh. fire's able to delay. Jock's able to find one on to Pelican. And now Rez has to have the clutch of his life. Position given away. But, or I believe, no, not sorry, I thought it was. But he is going to find one. Knows one's blue. Knows one is Moto Dor. The fire will delay the push from blue so he can focus on the player in Moto. The spray goes through. Cory Rob not even able to get found out. But it is just good to note that Thatcher has the diffuser. So unless he can cross over somehow from Moto Hatch, oh. it's not going to happen for the plant onto Arsenal. A beautiful play from Rez. And now he can just sit back and wait for the Moto Dora peak. And it's going to find the trade. And again, all trades go to defenders because the diffuser isn't down. Rez, have a round, buddy. An absolutely insane 1v3 clutch on the side of Marietta. And that is just what they needed before the half switch. Oh yeah, for sure. 
coming back on the COD as well, we see that the lives 29 to 21. So St. Clair getting down to work early. Priestley, no surprise, has a five streak on the board. And the call has been made on the next one as well. So St. Clair is absolutely them. rolling in terms yeah. of lives right now. I mean, th there's not really much to say. Priestley and Nacho are just playing that good. They really are, to be honest. They, they and are kind of holding so these well. points as well, bro. Right. Oh my god. <laughs> just kind of working around the 90 degree angle. He's going to fall from the building and he eventually finds the pick as well. Oh, nice. KB finding two of his own. I mean, with 27 seconds left as well, this is looking all St. Clair. They don't even got to worry about control. They have the lives. I'm just going to say it right now. St. Clair are going to be up 2-0 by the time this clock is all done and over. And they're going to be looking at map and series point. God, versus this is, Purdue this is University Yeah, this is honestly amazing. Especially with with the A point, to be honest. Top of eight, like third AC, that point being such a high like advantage point. You can like any gunfights that you that, that you engage in, especially while being up there, you can you win the majority of them, about 80% of it. But with KB down there kind of holding off that point was amazing. Right, I mean the picks do come through for St. Clair, they will be able to win based off of, I believe, a little bit of a uh, collaboration with the timer and oh, the amount yeah. of lives they have left. Yep. So, you know, really good job there from St. Clair. And now, Purdue University Northwest, you have to have a steel mental in order to take this game, oh, yeah. the series back in the hands. You got to have a reverse sweep in one game, and then you got to have a reverse sweep of two others in order to pull the ultimate reverse sweep of the series. For sure. So, Right now, it is going to be St. Clair who takes a control pretty quickly, wants to try to make this one a quick one. Nacho stunned out, but no one swings off the engagement, so he is going to find the pick when the late swing does come through. You want to see that a little bit earlier from Purdue, but when you have Priestley just dropping doubles like that, it makes it so much harder to do so. St. Clair just absolutely starting off hot. Oh yeah, for sure. And it does look like Purdue did end up abandoning just trying to defend A. From, what, from the looks of it. Yeah, it seems yep. like they're maybe trying to go for the B control, but I mean, oh man, this one is looking so hard, Aiden. They've given up A control. Now B is getting captured as well, contested. The battle around the door, drop shot, but the 2v1 should be on the side of St. Clair. Nacho able to find the wall bang, able to go back outside of the door as well as KB finding one through the window. And now Nacho able to find yet another. There's really it's, only two points that they have to watch. They have to watch that back alley right there that they're hopping over, which They're just could, so dominant. They're just so dominant covering it. They really are. I mean, right now, if you really want to get into the meme, I mean, that's it. That, that's all she wrote. Yep, Control and you got is it. done. And, I mean, that's it. Saints just absolutely sweep there. Yeah. And the ability of St. Clair to, again, like I said, they are so strong in those respawn modes because their ability to just trade each other. Oh, yeah. If a kill even does happen is just phenomenal. I mean, I want to point out a stat right now. They had 28 lives remaining, and one of them was from a team kill. Yeah, yeah. Purdue like killed as many St. Clair players as St. Clair <laughs> killed their own. Yeah. I mean, that just shows you how dominant this team really is, and just the talent and the level of these players on our COD team. Seriously, really, it was. And just, I feel like in like the respawn modes as well, St. Clair has such a good control over spawn points as well. Spawn points, especially controlling those, is key. You don't want to go too far and push into their spawn because they'll end up just flipping. Or, and then you also got to maintain, like, not, if you're staying not too far, but far enough to just trap them in their spawn. Like, right. Oh, and yeah. I mean, it seems that uh, if I'm seeing this correctly, that R6 did have a bit of a rehost. So that will take probably a little while to get back to, ladies and gentlemen. But for now, we'll be throwing it to a short break before we get back on coverage for the rest of the night All right. on R6. See yep. you in a bit.
Welcome back, Saints Nation. And right now, we are looking at an interesting game so far as Marietta, off the back of a 1v3 clutch from Rez, have found themselves in a little more of a closer game. They take the first round on attack as well on a clubhouse map that is should be defender-sided. Yeah. So St. Clair, they have a little bit to figure out here. They do, to be honest, with what? Oh, wow, yeah, I, did, I just realized Marietta just ended up winning, look, looks like two rounds, I believe? Yeah. yeah, Marietta, yeah, off the back of that, off of the, uh, from back from the rehost. Yep. It's going to be interesting as the Vigil pick did come through, maybe thinking that Marietta was going to be running a Deimos, the impact trick from Charm. A little bit risky as he is on low health, but he gets it done, nevertheless, getting rid of the Selma onto the cash wall for uh, Funk uh, does have... The play, though, he does at the angle. There was one Selma breach that was detonated, so that will be the pickup. Yeah. But Spoon Rapid will trade that back as he finds his first pick on the board from the rehost. Oh, yeah. Because uh, as you guys can see, all players are now set to zero on everything, which doesn't mean that they have zero for the entire game. The whole point is just it needs to be a new lobby, and they set the score predetermined. So that is all that happens. This happens sometimes in Siege Pro League as well, so nothing new to a Siege Watchers here. But... Nevertheless, let's get back into it. Salty Boy, a little bit of a play around logistics, has eyes on two and putting damage onto one, at, in particular, Funka now at one shot, holding logistics through to bedroom door. Rez, with now the cross angle, they aren't aware of the footholds in gym, though. And now Rapid can try to retake through central stairs. The play from the Super Shorty down below in kitchen. It is oh. going to be the vault, though, from bathroom. It will take out, I believe it was Corey Rob. Yep, but then Rapid gets the retrade. Rapid gets the trade, yep. They are aware of his position, though. The pick does come through, though. Salty Boy, it is going to be from those stairs, I believe. Pelican. The logistics side, but... The trades do come through, one from Static onto Salty as he was watching that backstairs flank and the position of Rapid after retrading that pick from Bathroom. It's just too easy for Marietta to read into. It they is, tie yeah. this game up in an interesting 4-4. It really is, to be honest. Kind of back and forth, to be honest, this game, eh? Now, if I'm not surprised, like if I'm remembering this correctly, I believe the score of the first game. Was it 7-0 or 7 I think I thought it was 7-1. I believe it was 7-1, seven seven yes. So if it was 7-1 and, and Marietta win this game by, let's say, in regulation, right, round three, you have yeah. to remember then St. Clair have to actually win the next game by five rounds, which means they actually have to seven really? So this is, you know, you, you, oh wait, sorry. No, 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 Oh my gosh. I can't believe I just screwed that up that bad. Sorry. My numbers got confused in my head. Seven ones. They have the plus six right now. If Marietta can win, they can kind of farm that down. So right now, St. Clair just have to focus on winning this game. If they win this game, no matter what, every result other than, uh, you know, like a seven, five, no, but even the seven, five, it's done. So yeah. If St. Clair win this game, they just get in. They're in. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, winning in right now. So if Marietta College wants to deny that from happening, they need to win this map. And then they need to make St. Clair, uh, you know, th that's it. Lose a series, pretty much. That's the, kind of the only way Marietta gets uh, St. Clair knocked out here. So yeah, long climb to make, but it's any college that's going to do it. It's going to be uh, Marietta showing some pretty good stuff on Clubhouse. So... You know, St. Clair, tighten up the bootstraps, guys. You got to lock in right now, and they're looking to do so as we get into this, I believe, basement defense. Yes, I, I believe it is basement. And it does look like Rapid does pick off Pelican. There we go. I mean, he finds the pick on, on Red Stairs, and uh, it's just onto the, onto the CC wall. Mm -hmm. It's just a position that shouldn't be found out, and especially when you look at who they picked off. Now, yes, the trade does come through onto the Warden, which, yeah, sure, that's going to suck for the execute later. Yeah, if it is. It is going to happen, but how are Marietta going to execute when you've lost your ace? Exactly. That's your hard breacher gone. And with no hard breaching devices in the back pocket of Marietta, they have to win through pure gunfights. If I was rapid right now, I wouldn't even be lurking. I wouldn't be roaming. I would just turtle up because if you can just have the guns on sight, you know that you can kind of force Marietta come through one way. This is smart though, because you know, you're really thinking Marietta can't take a hatch. There's no reason to think that any player would kind of walk into stock for some reason, unless yeah, it's to rotate over to the back stairs and kitchen side. Yeah. So it is interesting from Rapid to kind of sit in stock here. We'll see if it pays off for him. I, I think it will, to be honest, because they are... Just oh, let him, oh, he just walked by. 
However, he could change I think Rapids playing. playing for the second pick here, though, because there is another player, I believe, who, unless they went down blue, which, no, I believe they hopped out. Rapid did, unfortunately, miss his chance there. But sometimes playing your life, we'll see, because now he has gone completely unnoticed, mm -hmm. and there he is. You see him sneaking his way through uh, uh, stock. He is going to look to find the pick onto, onto Rez. Spoon will find one on a charm. Rapid has to try to get this flank. They are unaware of Salty Boy's position, and he is going to make Marietta pay by taking out the sludge. It's going to be Funka with the refrag on to Jocks, though. Again, you know what? For an attack that was l started by losing your ace, yeah. give it props to Marietta. They're in the site. They are actively taking over this round. And with Funka finding the pick onto Rapid, who missed his opportunity to find the pick on the Lurk, this is really, really tough. If you're a salty boy, it's really hard. Your laser sight gives away your position as well. It does add an ADS bonus. It does, but yes. But at the same but... time, now that Ash should know that you're positioned inside of Moto, nine seconds left. Zof uh, concussion grenade does go down. Salty boy knows he's going to get swung onto. Pre fires finds one. Plant going down. Two they seconds are left. Planting. They have to hold. Salty boy has the receiving end on a couple of bullets there. No, not quite. Just missed out. Peaks going through the church door onto the bomb chassis of B. Spraying wildly now, trying to predict where the head's going to go, but he just can't quite find the shot to make it count. Has to reposition now. The players on Marietta can just play this safe. They have the cross. They have the one onto Moto and Church side from boxes. Oh, that was just a Arsenal. nasty angle. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, even if the cross comes in from blue, the yeah. throw is just right there. Yeah. So beautifully played from Marietta, and they take the lead. Yeah, it actually is kind of surprising, really. Losing their hard breacher like that and then end up pulling up a round like that. Well, that is really good. Especially with the way that Oregon went. It, yeah. It, just, it really does kind of throw me into a weird spot because St. Clair is meant to be a good clubhouse team. This is a map I was talking with the boys beforehand. They were very comfortable on clubhouse. They're very comfortable in Oregon. Now, yes, yeah. a lot of teams are. Obviously, we know now Marietta obviously looks like a very comfortable clubhouse team <laughs> as well. Most NA teams typically are. But what I will say is that right now, they're definitely proving at least what I thought was going to be the result wrong. Because judging on how Oregon went, I did not think that Marietta, if you told me nine rounds in, we're going to be up 5-4, yeah. I would have called you crazy. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's just, it just definitely looks like a map that they really are comfortable in as well. But just like you mentioned before, St. Clair on this map as well has also been incredible. Right, I've, I mean, I've, they, I've, they were I've, up 3-1. Yeah. They were up 3-1. to one. And I've, I've observed previously... Uh, for our Saints on R6 before, and they've they've demolished pure, uh, previous teams on this game on this map. Right. I mean, uh, again, it's just a little bit of a weird one. Not a result that you'd expect this far. Yeah. But you can't worry about the past of your Saint Clair. Yep. You have to get the job done, and you exactly. have to try to find this win. Just get it done. Get it over with. Try to find these last three rounds if you can just try to get the win in regulation. Mm -hmm. Because right now, Marietta is challenging to try to get St. Clair to bring them to overtime if that even will happen. Or if Marietta just takes some regulation, we'll find out. For sure. And it does look like they end up doing the defense in the basement again. But hopefully, nobody has been eliminated yet. So I will point out that right now, because Marietta is up on St. Clair College, that yeah. does remove one of the round differences from that 7-1. Yes, so it does. Right now, there is actually a result where St. Clair, uh, you know, th here's the problem, right? They can't, I don't think they can actually lose out by winning the series, even if it goes to a third game, and yeah. then winning to round disadvantage, unless they literally get like 7-0. Yeah, yeah, I, which I doubt that. To but happen. the whole point yeah. is, if they lose that series anyway, then they're three and five, and they wouldn't even tie for four and four. Yeah. So with Drexel, so I don't believe that there is actually now a scenario where Saint Clair can lose based off of round differential. So this is going to be interesting to see how it gets played out. A trade. However, comes it through. is a you trade. Yeah. Thought that Salty Boy would have had the clean pick, but it just didn't happen. Reloading his sledge, and he's going to get found Rapid. out by Rapid through the con hatch Getting on trouble. the lurk. Finds Pelican on a drone as well. He does end up pulling that double. It looks like he does have an angle there. Oh, Corey Rob did end up getting that. And it is a 4v1 at the moment. And they needed to do that. St. Clair needed to create kind of a clean roam. They've been yeah. struggling for these last couple of rounds, setting up some good man advantage later into the scene. 
but they absolutely storm Marietta. Oh, it they seems did. It's like whatever they were talking about mid round through pick phase, you know, screw a tactical timeout unless they took it already. It seems like they have the found their footing. And now they can kind of just keep working at this. The Legion oh. will be able to find the pick onto Static. That was not... That was definitely a gunfight to forget about. Oh, yeah. Static. That was not some very good aim. Uh, so, you know, brush it off, Marietta. Mm -hmm. You're tied game now, 5-5. Five, five. St. Clair has the momentum. Let's see what they can build off of it. For sure. I, I gotta I gotta make a comment on rapid style. The roaming, how he plays that is I love that, to be honest. However, it, it does get him into some tricky situations. Right, well I mean, you know, usually Rapid was kind of playing a little bit of a weirder role on Flex in the past on the castle, but now with the fact that uh and there it is, right? You see him picking the castle there. Yeah. So, you know, Castle and Legion are the two big guys you kind of see Rapid play around. Mm -hmm. But on Legion, you know, it, it's kind of contradictory because if you die while roaming as Legion your time-dependent ability, like Goo Mines, for example, yep. it's not it's not ideal. It really isn't. So it's it's just it's a little bit of a uh, oh something happening in all chat. I think that the players were just kind of talking for a minute. I don't. I think everything's good. Yes, yeah, okay, we're good. So the yeah, we'll proceed as normal. Looking at all chat, it seemed like there might have been a little bit of a tech issue. Yeah, but, uh, it seems that they got that sorted out. So nothing bad there. The round will go on, and Marietta and Saint Clair will do battle. So as they get into this defense now. I do want to say you really need to keep an eye out for Rapid on this castle because he plays castle in a little bit of a weird way. He doesn't necessarily stick sight with castle, which is usually what a lot of people think castle is. He's more of like a kind of a uh, an anchor. But yeah. the way that Rapid plays castle, he kind of takes some of these more like doorways that you wouldn't usually expect to be castled off. And he instead holds kind of on a soft roam position, tries to make gunfights come through him and judges based off his gun skill. Logistics hatch will get broken. That's smart, to be honest, the way that he plays. Yeah, I mean, you have the A call. You might as well utilize it. Now, yeah. something I want to see later in the round. St. Clair does this thing on uh, Jim Bedroom yeah. where they will castle off the door from Jim. Not the window, but the door in the Jim. The door, yeah. And then Bandit will hop over the back wall and, yep, prep the castle barricade. So he will hit this castle barricade seven or eight times. I can't remember if it's eight or nine to break the castle barricade. Uh, I uh, believe I believe it's uh, eight, but if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, he will hit that seven or eight times, whichever one is the, the right one. I think it's eight, but seven or eight times, he'll prep it to make the castle barricade one hit. Mm -hmm. So oh. then if they need to get into gym quickly, he can just hit it once. Marietta doesn't expect the castle barricade to get broken in one simple oh, hit that's from the defensive smart. side. Yeah. And then it's able for a quick kill onto the planter. So it's a decent strat there from St. Clair and a little bit of a kind of a pocket one that they always use. But we'll see if Marietta has done their film study on St. Clair and are aware of this. Swing coming through from the roof. It is going to be on the bedroom. Spoon aware of that. But see the nade getting rid of one Jaeger or sorry, getting rid of the nade from the Jaeger ADS. And how was that not a kill for Sledge? Okay, there we go. I was about to say that should be a pick coming in mm -hmm. from the uh, the window of the roof. And wow, he's gonna find spoon with a double as well. Spoon going absolutely crazy. And oh man, I really thought that it was going to be oh. a doable round for Marietta, but all of a sudden the St. Clair players find two downs. Are you absolutely kidding me? Are you out of your mind right now? This should have been a round that the pressure, you know, you have 45 seconds. You can afford to play slow. So why are we swinging stuff that doesn't need to be swung right now? You can wait for the player to kind of build the pressure from the back. There is no reason to take those gunfights. Yeah. 37 seconds left now. Marietta find themselves with not a lot of time. They need to try to find some utility off the backs of these drones. But if they uh, fail to do so, it's going to be a hard one. You have Charm sitting behind a deployable shield on the logistics rotate. It's such a strong position because he also has the footholds that look into Jim. Yep. Let me look at Corey Rob. The castle barricade's gone. So he can vault over that bathroom wall and get a denial on the plant. Again, also to note, though, Corey's nitro cell no longer in pocket. The vault comes through. Corey Rob oh. finds one, but he's not going to find the second. Seven seconds left. And as the and vault Charm does gets come it. through, yes. Charm is aware of the position on the logistics rotate on that shield. He's going to find the player just before they make it behind the weight set. That was honestly a beautiful position right there. Because you had that window locked. And then with the uh, the gym the wall. Yeah. that's yeah. that's That was 
a great play by him. Right, but I mean, that's just the site setup, and that's why it oh, works yeah. at the St. Clair in such a big way. I mean, the Castle Barricade being prepped almost could even act as kind of kind of like a feint, even for teams that do know it. Yeah. Because then you kind of focus on that, and you don't focus on the fact that there are footholes literally going throughout the entire site. So if you can't get behind that, uh, that weight set, and you don't have clearance of cash or construction, you're going to get bitten for that. Oh, yeah, so for sure. It is St. Clair with a beautiful round on defense, and now all of a sudden, down 5-4, they find themselves on match point and playoff point. Because if St. Clair win right now, they have officially made Nate's playoffs as they will be 4-4 four and four and have a higher differential of rounds than Drexel. So right now, St. Clair, it's time to lock in. The it pressure's is. building, but this is what championship teams are made for. Yes, they are. They say defense wins championships, defense wins games. This is probably the most important one they've had in a really long time. It really so is, to be honest. Let's see if they can get it going. Let's do potentially one last lineup round down. It is going to be, or breakdown, is going to be Salty Boy and the Bandit. The castle on Jocks, not Rabbit this time, as he is going to go for his Legion pick. Cory Rob on the mute, as we've seen him do all season long. And Charm on the Tuberow. It is an interesting uh, lineup. And just like you said, this, this round could really... Well, change the outcome of it, to be honest. And it does Did, look like there is going to be... Does Sledge know that Rapids made himself down Garage Sword Stairs? I don't think no. he does. I think he has gone, gone on drone. So it is going to be interesting to see that when Spoon goes through stock, I'm assuming, which is what he's going to do. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what Rapid can do on this potential late flank. Or he could opt to go through the basement and go through uh, what I believe Ooh. will be backstairs and try to get a conflict now this is interesting they are going to tube uh trick the wall but it does freeze the bandits and there it is that's huh. it so that is uh it for that for, for that i mean there there you go so i believe that is one thermite charge down one more to go in pocket Tuberau doing a really good job there, just cool. holding that wall. And the Monty as well on the side of Marietta to get down. And oh, oh no! Just How do you have that happen? Dancing around the fire. How is Charm doing this? <laughs> How is he alive? <laughs> he just can't try to... He's gonna escape. Are you kidding me? And he's oh, gonna he find a kill. second as well. Are you kidding me, Charm? What are you doing? How did you do it? Rapid, Rapid finds another. Double. It's all going by the wayside. <laughs> and St. Clair <laughs> getting tricked out. Wow. What a play. I mean, Charm was literally just kind of like fleeing for his life there. He, didn't know the he, fire. he couldn't double back. There was fire there. No, he couldn't. I was going to talk shield changes, but what's the point? The shield's dead. So now there's no... <laughs> Monty has no effect on the round. I, I, I'm lost for words how Charm got out of that situation alive. Marietta, I, I'm just going to say it. They threw that round. They did. They, they, they honestly did. I mean, what do you want me to say? It's harsh, sure. But you killed your own Monty, and you can't even reframe. Charm's going to be yeah. able to just hold this, and he's going to find the last two. You never want to peek that bottom garage when you have the man on the AR-15 DMR yeah. to figure it out. It is going to be St. Clair to win out. It is going to be St. Clair to take 2-0. It is going to be St. Clair to build up the round differential. And it is going to be St. Clair who you will see in your NACE playoffs. Damn, that, I got to say, that game was phenomenal. That last round was phenomenal. That was crazy. Like, that was crazy. Absolutely crazy. No business at all yeah. uh, in, in, in it being like happening like that. Charm should have been dead so long ago. Seriously, but I, kinda, I can't it. believe that he actually survived that. Like he was saying, like he was, yeah, like the he was, yeah, he was trying to, words. yeah, he honestly, the like words. he was trying not to get killed by the fire, the flame, and then well, going back and forth because the other guy was there as well. But the swing doesn't come yeah. out. They know, like the pistol swap as well, and yeah. the swing yeah. somehow. I don't. It was like ten seconds. No one swung him. Yeah, yeah, I was surprised by that. He could have like. <laughs> He, the other team could have at least like at least went to the Trump side and picked him off. Trump didn't even try to yeah. drop down from the top. No, he did. He, he literally just there. stood up he just there. Just stood up there. Yeah, even while the stairs to his right as well. Like he could have like. Hey. <laughs> but you know still, what? that's it. Yeah. I mean, St. Clair, we talk about it all day, but actions speak louder than words. Yeah. St. Clair proving themselves there, taking the 2-0.
Let's go over a little bit of a game recap before we finish this one out. Is St. Clair, obviously, you know, just going 2 0. They get into playoffs. It is yeah. Minnesota uh, State University, or University, or State University, sorry, who will find the sweep onto our Overwatch Academy team. Yeah. Big shout outs to Minnesota State. They played their absolute minds out. And, uh, you know, as well as a shout out to really just all of our teams who are competing against oh, yeah. these Saints teams, obviously, you know. Uh, all these teams, they do such a good job of competing and showing up and giving us the will to cop on here and do the <laughs> cast. But touching down on our last matchup, CCL, it is going to be the COD team just showing why they are such a dominant team. Just a three Priestley, sweep, yeah. Brandon, Nacho Slayer, KB. KB. You just can't, you know, what are you going to do, man? They're just too good. Seriously, that roster is just high level at that point. All Just a big, sh literally just a big shadow to all of our teams, really. Right. Like. Of course. And I want to give a shout out as well to our sponsors in Subway, Tim Hortons, HyperX, uh, the SRC, and the St. Clair alumni. So, mm -hmm. big shout out to you guys. We couldn't do what we're doing here without you guys. But some other people who we couldn't be doing our job without are the people in the back room. So I want to give a special shout-out to, I believe it was TJ, Mr. Dan Banner, Amanda. I think Tommy was back Tommy there Tommy was back there, well. yep. I believe Matthias, Matthias as yeah. well. Yeah. So big shout-out to all you guys. We love you guys. You guys let us do what we were, what we love to do. Yeah. You enable us. Who else enables us is the fans at home. Big shout outs to all you guys tuning in. You know, you guys are the reason why I get up here, the reason why I talk, the reason why Aiden talks. We had a beautiful stream today. Seriously. We had a wonderful time. Shout out to a couple of new viewers who I know are watching at home. You do know who you are. We appreciate you tuning in and hope to see you in the future as well. Yeah. But that's going to be all from me, Patrick Smoke Chambers, and Aiden Salad Ghost of Mers. And we will see you all later. Signing out. Until next time.